Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and I'm here at Puget Systems in Auburn, Washington, getting yet another build. Yeah. Now, this is John <laughs> Box standing right beside me. This is the guy that I suckered into helping me get this thing all brought together. We have a couple of sponsors on board to build this magnificent beast. We have Gigabyte providing the motherboard, Crucial providing the memory, Intel providing the processor, and Samsung providing the storage, right? right? So everything else was provided by this guy and his generous business that I keep on duping over and over again, and he falls for it every time. Also, this computer was built by the one and only Houston, right over here, also known as Dr. Professor Beardasaur, right there, but, uh, but he actually needs to get back to work, so get out of here, get out of here. So uh, the reason that we built this computer is because William, built in 2015, being a dual Xeon beast that it was, was getting a little long in the tooth. Well, mm -hmm. as far as we're concerned, there's many people that would think that that's still an amazing computer. Two or three years in our yeah. industry, it's a lifetime. It is a lifetime, it is a lifetime. But the main reason why we decided to go this route is because of one thing. Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere is my bread and butter. It's what I use to edit these videos that you guys watch. And it just, with the dual Xeons and some of the compounding problems in Adobe Premiere and with multi-proc systems, it just wasn't working the way that I wanted to. So I was like, John, let's build a computer that is perfect for Adobe Premiere. So John, why don't you tell my audience why we settled on a single processor i9 over a dual Xeon beast? Yeah, well, I mean, when you came to us, I think what we talked about was like, Okay, let's do another build, but this yep. time it's going to be the computer for Adobe Premiere. Right, that's the primary, everything else is secondary to Adobe Premiere. Right, right. So we've done a lot of testing on yep. Adobe Premiere on how a CPU scales across multiple cores and what uses GPU acceleration in one platform versus another. Yep. So we have all the articles up on our website. If you check out uh, the publications section of our website, you can see all the just tons of testing we've done. Yeah, and I'm going to link that down below. Check the video description if you guys want to see any of that stuff. Cool. Uh, end result of all that is, is that this is from the ground up the fastest computer you can build today for Adobe Premiere. That's amazing. Now, especially if you're doing 4K footage, red yeah. footage, even up to 6K, um, it becomes really challenging. I mean, you have, you have a lot of different tests you need to run to make sure, you know, your hardware is ideal. Absolutely. So in this case, we have a uh, X299 platform. Yep. Uh, and that enables us to use the new Core i9 CPUs, which are awesome, uh, where you might have had to use a dual socket system of war. Yeah. You can now get all those cores onto a single system, and that's really important. Yeah. Because now you don't have to have multiple processors talking across a bus. Right. It's like one processor, simple as good, simple as fast. And it's for it's 14 physical cores, 28 logical cores. Yeah. Which yeah. compared to the two Xeons in that box, it was only 24 okay. logical cores. So, yeah. so even yeah. on one chip, one single i9, not even a Xeon, we have more cores than we did between the two Xeons that were in William. Yep. Yeah. And the core frequency is a lot higher too compared to the old system, especially when yeah. you factor in boost clock. Yeah, when, especially when you have Turbo Boost 3.0. So some people might ask, like, why didn't we go, like, if we're gonna do this, why didn't we go all the way to the 18 core and I really do this right? Yep. And it's because you have to look at how the CPU scale and you have to look at the frequency and the Turbo Boost. The 18 core processor will be slower. Oh, wow. Than the 14 core yep. in this application. Now in different applications, you'll have different results, but that's why we do all this testing. So we have a 14 core processor in here. It has the Turbo Boost Max 3.0, that gets us up to, I think, 4.3 on yep. two cores. It, it looks for the two strongest cores and it boosts those up to 4.3. That's a really nice mix of you, you have good performance on single-threaded yeah. parts of your application, but then when you have something that's multi-threaded, it'll scale nicely, you have 14 cores. Yeah. And it scales really nicely. And we got the memory subsystem to back it up now because we have not 64 gigs, mm -hmm. we have 128 gigabytes yep. of memory in this. And that's, again, that's right up our, our recommendation. Yep. Uh, we tested that if you're doing 1080p footage, no, this is like overkill. Yeah. But you get up into 4K and especially 6K. Yeah. And yes, you see it is worth the expenditure to go up to 100. And it's the gigs. it's the faster DDR4 too. It's the 2666, correct? Yeah. Now that we're on Skylake X, yep. the native uh, clock speed there is 2666 for the memory. Yep. And then if that wasn't enough to have the faster memory, more abundant memory, more cores on the processor, then we have the storage, which is really yeah. important. To video editing. Why don't you tell them a little bit about the, the M2 storage that's in yeah, this piece. Yeah, so in this one we have, so one thing that's really cool about this Gigabyte board is there's three M.2 slots on board. Yeah, so that's we can pretty go, unreal. We can go native NVMe without having to use like adapter sleds and things. We can put yep. those all right down on the board. And the NVMe storage is just amazing. These Samsung drives, the 960 Pros, yep. are, are just amazing drives. Um, we have another video that we did that, that Matt did our testing on for, okay, how can we make our storage optimized for Adobe Premiere? And yeah. we found some really interesting things. Um, first, wow. in, in most applications, like NVMe drives are like faster than you can possibly use. Yep. Uh, but in Adobe Premiere, you're dealing with large files, uh, maybe red, um, low compression video. It's really large files. Right. So you need to be able to move those around really quickly. Uh, one interesting tidbit that we found 
is uh, when you are ingesting your, your files yep. into Adobe Premiere, when you're conforming your audio, you're doing all of that kind of initial loading of your, your media. Right. If you have that on a secondary drive, it's twice as fast. Does That's it, amazing. Doesn't matter what the drive is. Yep. It, so it's some sort of, you know, Adobe quirk, Adobe feature. <laughs> yeah, we literally built this around Adobe's shortcomings. <laughs> yeah. Now, the three drives that we have in here, we're breaking it up. We're gonna have an OS drive that's dedicated to the OS and the page file. We're gonna have right. a secondary drive that's dedicated to the programming, the programs and the editing suite itself. And then we're gonna have the media drive that's just my scratch disk, basically, for Adobe yeah. Premiere. Yeah, for the pre-renderings and all of that. And we have a whole YouTube video that we, we made on, like, if you wanna do this for yourself, that'll step you through the entire thing. And yeah. it is important. You get a really good performance boost out of that. Now, another cool thing is you guys said you did the research to figure out that there was a fundamental problem mm -hmm. with Adobe Premiere and the specific, uh, this specific processor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you guys found a way around it with just adding in a little more voltage. Eventually, it'll be fixed yeah. by a BIOS update of some kind. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about how you did that and how you created a custom profile in the BIOS to make it sure. run rock solid. Yeah, well, so I think this is like one of the things that's inherent in like using a newer platform yeah. is that there's always going to be things you find that need to be addressed like this. And that's one of the things that we do. I mean, that's that's like why, why we're important as, as a provider. Uh, so we found that in the latest update for Adobe Creative Cloud, um, there were instabilities that were found. And people yep. are having either like performance issues or blue stre blue screens, and so we're that's the job that we do. Yep. We work with the manufacturers. We identify those things. We alert them to the problems. We work them with them a bio, on a BIOS fix, and uh, we're actually in the middle of doing that right now, and that's not good enough. So we're applying our own BIOS settings. Yep. We know what needs to be done. Like there's a voltage problem to the processor that's creating an instability in Creative Cloud, so we fixed it, and so we have a BIOS yep. pro profile for that. Ultimately, that's going to that's going to go back up the chain with Gigabyte. Yep. They're going to have a BIOS update, and that's going to be public to everyone. In the meantime, this is our, our profile. This and one of the cool things are you discovered and solved that problem in lieu of all of the benchmarks passing no problem. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like, it, it passes Prime95 tests yep. and Unigen and all of our other benchmarks, but it was that update from Creative Cloud that happened just a few weeks ago that causes a problem. And so that's kind of the story of like, that's what yep. we do. That's what we do here. So the mix of storage and processor and memory that we have in this thing is about as optimal as you can get for running Adobe Premiere on a workstation. All down the line, this is our highest recommended spec for Adobe Premiere. And it's still got two Titan XPs in it. So it's going to be a fair bit good at gaming too. Yeah, yeah. Even though, even though it's a secondary use. I think, I think it'll be great. If you want to stoop to that, I guess. So, so this has been amazing. I want to thank Houston for, for working with me to build this thing today. And by working with me, I mean, I just talked a lot and he did all the building. Get back to work. Who said you could stand right there and watch as you get out of here? <laughs> so we're upstairs in the lab. I call it the fishbowl because it's got a bunch of glass windows around it for people to gawk at you the whole day while we're building this thing. But Houston actually put this together with no problems. This went together really smooth. And if you guys want to watch the entire build, I went ahead and uploaded and linked that video is unlisted. It will be down in the video description. It's five hours and it was a mm -hmm. good time us going through everything. We were talking a lot. A lot of it was waiting for the door to get done. You can see the door was etched right here. Now the difference between the door on this and the old system, and if you guys remember the old system sitting right over there, that is William, the old system that we have drugged through the dirt that has been to many PDX lands. We actually recently retired it on its last PDX LAN. Mm -hmm. It will never go to another PDX LAN again, hence it has all the signatures on the panel of all the people that will never see it again. But this is the new gaming rig right here. This is the new hotness. This is what we're gonna be using going forward. Now what they changed on the side panel was now the light shines down through the panel Mm -hmm. instead of against the panel. So it illuminates the logo a lot more. Yeah, it's like a fiber on the optic kind of approach to it. Yeah, it, it, so it makes it stand out really, really nice. And we're also gonna be doing some graphics on the front of the case. Uh, that's gonna be phase two, basically. And there's even a mod to the motherboard that you guys did to actually put my logo and your logo on yeah, the chipset cooler. That was a fun little little thing to work in. So it's really cool. It's got all the standard brackets that they create for this specific case. Now this is, uh, which fractal case is this? It's a Define R5. It's so a great case. The, so the Define R5, this case is much smaller than the old case. The mm -hmm. overall system weight is way less too. I wish I could put this on a scale and figure it out, but I can tell just by picking it up. It is massively lighter. So I'm definitely looking forward to taking this to lands versus that. And I'm looking forward to all of the performance it's gonna give me in Adobe Premiere. And you have forbidden me to create a RAID on this machine. And he has forbidden me to use SLI on the graphics cards while I'm editing Adobe Premiere. And I've agreed to all of these requirements <laughs> to ensure that I have a good experience as well as not drive John crazy. Well, John, I appreciate it. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you for building this system for me. I really appreciate it. Guys, check out PugetSystems.com. They will be offering this specific system also if you want it. Even if you want all my logos and graphics on it and everything, it's entirely possible. I'll have the link down below. And if you have any questions, just reach out to Puget Systems. They'd be happy to answer them. They'll also go through and plan an entire PC build for you. I told them I wanted Adobe Premiere to run as well as it possibly could. And now we have the system to do that right here. Now, guys, unfortunately, I don't get to take the system home today because John is a stickler about QC here. They're gonna run it through all of their burn testing. They're gonna 
run it through and do the FLIR testing, take all the pictures and imaging for the website and go through it with a fine tooth comb even after the build and hopefully I'll get to pick it up next week and uh, you can expect to see some more videos. We're going to be doing some benchmarking on it in Adobe Premiere because we definitely want to see what the render speeds are on this thing. And we're also going to branch out and do some stuff with virtual machines on it and a couple of other things in tandem with the mining uh, system that was built before that has the 8 1060 GPUs. This is going to be, this has been a really fun project and I still can't believe that I keep talking into this, John. Seriously, I can't <laughs> believe it. One more time. <laughs> one more time. It's always one more time. <laughs> so again, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, definitely check out that live stream. It'll be worth it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.